How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and we are back in another video. I got a lot of people asking me, where should I buy my house? What's the best location to do it at? What are the best houses in the game? So I wanted to address some of those questions here today. So we are going to talk about, in this video, what is the best spots to put your houses in strategically? We will also talk about the price of the housings and what they have to offer. And then we will also talk a little bit about where to put your in cooldown in the late game, like when you get to the late game, right? Because while you're leveling, you should probably flex these things depending on where you are going most personally. So I would set your in to the spot that you keep going back to to level at. And I would also consider buying a home in a territory that's going to be, uh, you know, good for you to level uh, and get to uh, a place that's kind of far away that's maybe not the normal starting town. And then so we'll talk about some of those things here. <clears throat> so first, we'll go ahead and talk about um, like while leveling. So I think while leveling, you probably want to have a home in Brightwood. And there is a very cheap home that we can show you uh, here in a moment. And it's a nice place to have um just because it gives you access to this level 20 to like 30 zone and it also gets you pretty much anywhere you want to go on the map besides the starter towns which most of the time your faction will own one of these starting towns at least so you will be able to kind of teleport to whichever one your faction choose or ha has like possession of and you'll get a cheap fast travel there so that's why you want to make use of this uh the home up in the brightwood so that would be my first recommend my first purchase house was also in Brightwood, and that was a great place to go. Uh, so we'll go ahead and check that here. Um, then we'll look into the two other houses, because while leveling, you probably will only have enough gold to purchase one house. But once you get up there, you're going to need two more. And the reason why is because each house you get comes with five trophy slots, and these trophy slots are massive. They do a lot for you. So um, in my opinion, there are three zones, and we'll talk about all three of these zones, that you kind of want to have a house in in the end game. So the first zone is going to be Ebenscale Reach. And the reason why you want to have a house here is because of these 65 portals that spawn in the area. It's kind of hard to get to, and you're going to want to go to them and complete them fast. However, the Azos staff is not currently working, so no one can do that at the moment. Uh, there's also another location called the Imperial Palace, which is a very good farm spot, especially for cooking ingredients. If you want any Tier 5 recipes, this is the place to go. There is massive provision crates and uh, stockpiles here, and you will get these best-in-slot, best-in-game recipes going in this area. It's also got a bunch of high-level elites, which is going to be part of your normal in-game farming route. So you can do this daily, and it's going to be a great place to go. So you're going to want to consider a home in Ebon Scale, right? This is going to be a good place to go so that you can get there quickly and for free. And the best home for that is going to be up this way. <clears throat> I haven't purchased it yet because I'm waiting to purchase it with my girlfriend. We always buy all the houses together, but uh, this is going to be the one we're going to get. It is the uh, little green shack here, and it is 5000 so it's a really cheap house. Uh, but this one's a nice one to have. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of items that you can hold in it, but it's good for now, right? Until you figure out where you want to put your in-game house, because your in-game house is going to be super expensive, and you may want to migrate that on the area. But all you're after is this fast travel and then the five trophy slots, because you need to fill up your house with the trophy slots so that you can get max proficiency boost and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so this is the reason why you would want to have it in Ebon Scale. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at here. The second uh, house, like, you know, that on this list, you basically have an option. You can have one in some major town that you own, like Everfall or Windsward for fast travel. Um, but it doesn't offer much. It does give you some storage space with the storage chest, so it's decent to do. But as you can see here, for me, it cost me 27 to travel this. And there's other discounts and stuff like that. But since I own Everfall, it's not going to cost me a whole lot to get there. If my faction owns it, like we could take a look at Windsward, it's going to only cost me 62 Even though I don't own this personally, my faction just happens to own it. Uh, and again, there's other discounts in there, understandably. But it's, you know, it's not going to cost you a lot. So you want another house in another location. So we'll go ahead and recall to our house here in Brightwood. And we'll go ahead and check this one out. And here you'll be able to see the best home placement for Brightwood. 
Um, in my opinion, this is probably the next best go-to, and we'll talk about why here in a second. Like, for one, it's a good leveling house because it's super cheap, and it gets you in that early game, but also gets you in the late game. So, as you can see here, this house is also a small house. Um, it should be a, a 5K house as well. If you're buying a first-time house, it'll be 2.5K or something like that. So, you'll be able to get this one for super cheap, and it's right next to the town board and the war board so it's got great placement uh the house in ebon scale was a little bit further but it's just the the closest one that you can find that's that cheap because the house is up there a lot more expensive and so the reason why you would want this house is because it's the closest to great cleave and eden grove which is going to be places that you're going to be fast traveling for quests right around the level 50 area the 40 area and you're also going to be uh, going into elite routes, which would basically be this Mangled Heights right here. This is a level 60 zone that you need to farm for tuning keys. There is also Malevolence, which is in the center of Eden's Grove, which is a level 62, 65, up to 65 zone, which is used for tuning keys as well. And then there is the home to the Garden of Genesis and the Spriggan's Arena, right? The Monocchio's Cliff. So these are going to be the reasons why you want a home here because it's going to touch all these things and get you pretty close to pretty much everything in addition to Shattered Mountain, which is something we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, if you don't have Brightwood, like your faction doesn't own it, you could consider Morningdale as it is close to Eden's Grove, but it's just farther away from Shattered Mountain and Great Cleave. So strategically, it's not as valuable as the Brightwood town would be. So... That's Brightwood. Um, I would recommend this 5k house just while you, you know, figure out where you permanently want your houses at and while you save up money for those super big houses because they are expensive. They're like 20k uh, and up, so you're going to have to pay the big hefty price if you want all those upgrades that come with it, which it should come with um, faster cooldown time on the house, and it should also come with more housing space and more storage chest space available in that region, right? Um, so then we'll go ahead and take a look at the final place where you will want your house. I'll go ahead and recall to that, and it's going to be Reek Water. And Reek Water is one of the best in-game zones in the game, if not the best in-game zone in the game. It has pretty much everything you could imagine. It actually has three of the in-game content zones within the same area. So the reason why you're going to want uh, this place... As you can see, this is my house. It's a little hut. It's very sad looking, but, you know, I got my trophies and my chest in there for storage and all that good stuff. Uh, but this hut is directly uh, right of the town board over here, so it's super quick. So if you want to sign up for any war or something, there's also the storage that's right next to it. This is probably the best strategical location. And then if you want to find a higher house, as you can see up there on the top, there's those big houses, which are like 20k or something. Eventually, if you want to get into that, uh, you know, that part of the game, once you get a lot more gold under your belt. So Reek Water is the best because of a few reasons. Uh, the first one, actually, is that Reek Water has a food cart, which no other town has. And I don't know if my cooldown is up. It's not, unfortunately. Uh, but basically, if you go to this food cart, you will get rare cooking ingredients. And you will get, like, spices and season blends and cooking oil, fish oil. Like, all that stuff that's super hard to find can come from that cart. So it's really nice. Uh, the other reasons are that there are three in-game zones in this area. The first one being Eternal Pool, which is the uh, Protector's Arena. The second one is going to be the Lazarus Instrumentality, which is this landmark here. I just haven't touched it yet, but as you can see, I have the quest to go there. Go to the Lazarus Instrumentality. This is the hardest dungeon in the game right here, the Lazarus. And then there is also the Siren Queen's Lair, which is going to be over here. The Amphitheater, which is the Siren Queen's Arena. So you're going to have three in-game zones in this region. There are also level 65 portals that are going to be in this area. You will need to teleport there to get those quickly once the portal portals come online once the you know tier 5 azoth staff is unlocked and fixed then you will be able you will pretty much be competing for these portals you're going to need to get them fast and they're going to take a while to spawn they're like a 30 45 minute timer and if you don't get there you can't get your uh, tuning orb components and materials so being able to get here quickly and for free is definitely going to help you out uh, do keep in mind that all these fast travels to the homes require, n they have no weight limit to their costs, so you can stock up on full stuff and then transfer back to, like, your main town 
whatever that may be for super cheap like here it's 28 so i can just get back there and load my material so i'm using these three points that are kind of centric to getting me to end game locations and then i'm using my you know whatever to main town my faction owns as my main trading hub i will teleport back to that manually and this is going to be what's going to be best for your house placement at least now the house inside the zone is completely up to you um, if you have a bunch of cash and you want to shell out for the one that you like the most or that looks cool to you go for it it's going to be awesome do whichever one is best but for me i bought the cheap homes on the strategic uh, level just so that i can get the teleports that i need now until i really get into that housing stuff in the late game because there's tons of stuff i need to do right now to uh, keep my daily cycles up and stuff like that keep boosting my watermark and all that stuff i'm at like four or like 550 watermarks maybe a little higher right now on most of my gear so i'm trying to get up in the area um, and some of my stuff has a, a bit lower than that. It just depends on what you have. So then we'll go into the last part of this video, which is going to be the end cooldown. And I strongly recommend that you put your end up here in Mountain Home Outpost because it is the hardest place in the game to get to. You cannot, like, it's going to cost you a lot to fast travel up here. There's no discount because none of these territories can be claimed, right? These are all locked by the server. No one can claim these. And this is going to be your best teleport for in-game farming. And the reason is that the Scorched Mines is here, which has tons of Orichalcum. And it's also going to have level 64, 65 opponents in here that are going to give you the highest watermark gear drops. And it's also close to Mirror Guard, which is the pretty much the highest level zone in the game along with the sirens area which also has 65 portals in it and it also has a ton of level 65 even some 66 and you know high level monsters that will increase your watermark a lot plus the basic portals that are just around the map so you're going to need to get there and start farming those once everybody catches up to 60 on your server and starts kicking into gear right uh, so these are the big places there's also some other small zones around here like cannabis uh, Caminus and things of that nature, but they're not like necessary farming things. Actually, I think Caminus is. I think you get some rune, uh, sorry, arena key component here, uh, so it's not too bad to do. So you will need to do some of this eventually, but that's going to be your basic farming route. So this is going to be your best end game setup. And keep in mind that it starts with your early game, it starts at like level. 25 30 when you get to brightwood you want to buy this brightwood house because it's gonna be super huge for all your fast travel needs and also just for leveling in the zone it's a fantastic what place to level there's level 35 portals there's this elite place here called perryville uh which is like a little island or sorry not perryville lake green uh genevieve and uh genevieve genevieve oh man geez these words <laughs> anyways there's a bunch of level 35 guys there and there's also a bunch of uh good leveling spots for like logging and stuff over here in this uh angry earth area so there's just tons of great things to do there and then you can transition to these uh reek water and ebon scale homes in the late game uh so then you don't have to worry about that so that's going to be the best setup for housing and in fast travel i hope that this help gave everyone some insight as to where they would want to purchase and buy their home at and as always, if you enjoyed this content or if you found it helpful, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. We also have a join button down below for memberships. You will get tons of perks, benefits, and all kinds of great stuff like that. We have emojis and badges with the uh, membership join, so make sure you check that one out if you're interested in supporting us further. And we also have a Discord in the description, which will have a community of like-minded New World players where you can get information just like this and even the latest gold farms and all kinds of good stuff on there. Plus, even ask me any questions directly if you have any of those. So that's pretty much it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we will catch you in the next video.